presuming there are no uh, availability changes between Judah and uh, God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I always have to. I think I think we're good. Okay. Um, do you have any bit more clarity on maybe whatever kind of minutes limits? No, same. I mean, I, like I said, I think he's able to play a, a, a good chunk of minutes, but I'm not. We're not going to push him into the high 30s uh, if we can uh, all avoid it. So, you know, I think the sweet spot's probably somewhere around 30. But we, you know, we who knows? Um, see how he feels, how he looks, how the game goes. You know, so many factors in it. But you know, he has looked uh, capable and has had the requisite high intensity workouts. So he, he's he's ready to go. When, when you look at Kyrie's work in practice so far, uh, do you just, even though it might create problems at home, do you just have to feel that he's better off with the starters? We'll see eventually. <clears throat> you know, I mean, we got to just consider all the options and <clears throat> figure out, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, um, you know, the, the short term, the middle term, and the long term. You know, long term, probably. You know, we'll figure out the rest of it as we go. But, but in other words, uh, uh, why would you use him uh, just short term as a backup right now when this team is struggling? The only reason would be to work him back in rhythm, cohesion, uh, <clears throat> injury prevention, you know, cap his minutes. That way it's easier. If someone comes off the bench, they automatically miss a portion. But... <clears throat> You know, it's uh, <clears throat> it's not. You know, I don't, I don't know that it, if there's any huge decisions to be made here. You know, it's uh, we want to get him out there, get his feet underneath him, get him feeling kind of acclimated to playing NBA basketball, real games, referees, crowds. Um, you know, it's 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 been a, it's been a while, and uh, so we really just want to see him get some some runway um, and and, and reacclimate. This is the kind of team where you have to push buttons. For guys to get the best out of them, or do they kind of put their own ones to get the best out? Of them? You know, I think traditionally we <clears throat> we we have a a tendency to you know to sometimes um, not start the right way when, when we're playing teams that are missing lots of guys. Having said that, you know, I think we're in a position here having lost three that uh, you know our, our guys are unhappy with that. So hopefully they they come out and play good basketball and are sharp from the beginning. Yeah. After three straight home losses, uh, could there be a better time for Kyrie to return and just give these guys an emotion? That would be great, you know, but it could go the other way too. He could feel very uncomfortable being in his first game. So I want to give him some space to, to be able to play well, play mediocre and play poorly. You know, it's not fair to expect him to come back and uh, cure all of our uh, ills. So. You know, if he does feel good and has a good outing, it will give our guys a lift for sure. But I don't want to put all that on him. You know, the, the three-game losing streak is not his fault, is not any of his doing. So I don't want him to have to feel in a position that tonight he's got to, you know, cure all those things. There's one player that probably stands to be most thrown off by Kyrie being in and out of rotation. It's probably Patty. Right? How do you, I guess, walk that line with him from being consistent, even though his, I guess, status in the rotation might not be consistent? Yeah, I mean, I think if you look back at the start of the year, this is getting back to a more natural position for Patty. You know, when Joe was playing, um, you know, Patty played in that 20-minute range, 20, 25 minutes more more times than not. So, you know, on the road, this can, you know, maybe give him a little bit more rest, um, allow him to save his legs a little bit. You know, as we've seen lately, although he's been unbelievable for us this year on and off the court, you know, that there's a fatigue factor at, at times. Um so this can help him as well. So I see it as a positive for Patty, even though his minutes may come down a little bit here and there. See, I know uh, uh, Jersey retirement is tonight. Uh, so you can probably hear it from the coach itself. Uh, what do you think of this move? Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's meant a lot to the league. It's, uh, um, you know, his career, you know, speaks for itself. He's one of the all-time greats, uh, Hall of Famer, champion, MVP, um, you know, closer, clutch player, uh, all those things. But I think also being a international player and coming over to the league, starting uh, somewhat auspiciously and finishing uh, the way he has is a great story for the global game and the impact the global game has had on the NBA.
it can be it can be hard to remember the powdery season of last year ended with an injury. Oh, how long did it take for him to get over that? When, when was he healthy? Uh, you know, I, I'm not I'm not exactly sure because he was playing pickup by the end of the end of August, early September. I'd say early September, but I, I don't. You know, I don't know if he was like, I'm way past this thing. I feel great. I'm over it. I, I think there was probably some lingering effects. And also, you approach rehab differently in the summer. You know, he's not in a race against the clock to get back. He's taking his time with it a little bit as well. So I don't know that it's uh, it's easy to say, right, like how long it took and how long it could have took if it was in the middle of the season or, you know, if we were continuing to play. That's sort of the closest parallel we have here is to a player – he played his first game after maybe having like off-season surgery or mm. something like that. Uh, you know, other than the the nature of his injury is pretty commonly overcome, um, and the amount of time that he's had to overcome that injury, it, that's the only part that makes it different. But yeah, I mean, I think that's a fair analogy, and that we there's a player that's missed a big chunk of the season, uh, you know, dating back to last year's playoffs. So you know, they're. You know, we did have him in training camp for a week or so. Um, so, yeah, it is a unique, unique situation. I'm not sure how many are, are, are similar to this one. Steve, uh, you're an international player, but Canada has a different relationship to the U.S. and Germany, and you played college ball mm -hmm. in the U.S. So is there any greater historical significance in the whiskey Maybe, sure. I don't know. Uh, I, I was thinking, I was like, who really cares? I don't know. <laughs> I was like, Greg cares. Why does he care? I don't know. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I think in, in that, you know, our proximity puts us in a position where maybe we know a few more secrets and have a little less boundaries than a kid who grew up in a small town in Germany. So, you know, I think the world's so small nowadays, but when Dark entered the league, it wasn't that small. You know, the NBA was still miles and miles away, you know, in actuality and theory. So uh, it is a unique story. And uh, yeah, I think he has a great story and it is a unique one. Setting, setting aside talent for a second. I mean, after the last game, James Harden essentially was expressing that you guys can't wait around for Kyrie great when we get him, but there are greater issues that you know, yeah. at the fore here that we have to address. Was that something that you guys discussed either post game in the locker room or you know, yeah. yesterday? Or yeah. Back? No, I would say we, we, this is a team that our goal is to improve week by week all year. Um, so, you know, we, this week, what this week has given us is an opportunity to improve an opportunity to look at some things truthfully and to address them. You know, uh, let's take the last game, for example, 24 offensive rebounds is way, way, way too many. And we had to hit it head on and recognize that, we, you know, we can't wait for someone else to get it. We're not a big rebounding team to begin with. Um, we can't wait for others to box out. We can't start leaking out. You know, I think sometimes we force, people into tough shots and we think I might get some at the other end and we're leaning this way and we're not good enough to do that. We don't have that guy that's getting 15 rebounds a night. So we have to gain rebound or we're usually smaller and uh, we can't have any flybys or leak outs. And so addressing that, I think was, was a component that that was positive from the, from the result. Brady, on Zoom. <laughs> Coach, um, in your, this little bit of time around Kyrie, what have you been able to gauge from his uh, level of excitement? about getting out there and, and, and anxiousness, too, at the same time. Sorry, sorry you were quiet. Does that mean, did, does Kyrie personally have a level of excitement? Yeah, from what you've been able to pull in your conversations with him ahead of tonight's game. Yes, yes, I think he does. I mean, I haven't necessarily asked him about tonight, but just in general, his return has been, you know, something that he's he's been, you know, excited about and happy to be back and playing basketball and doing what he does and being a part of this group. So, you know, you can see um, the smile on his face and the energy and, and uh, you know, what it means to him to be back. And it's it's exciting for all of us to have him back in the fold. Can you expound on what this reacclimation um, process is going to be like? Not just for Kai, but the, the supporting, the guys around him. Because on one hand, you want to defer to help him get into a rhythm, but you also want guys to stay aggressive, too. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good question. You know, maybe I'm taking it for granted, but uh, 
you know, Ky- Kyrie is uh, the game's not overly complicated for him. So I, I have a feeling he'll find his his space and his timing and, and his cracks in our offense, whether he, you know, has the ball or the ball finds him. Uh, you know, I think it's more about him just getting back to playing the game, contact, the cadence of the NBA game, um, the the feeling of being out there with his teammates, more so than the technical, you know, ability to fit in. You know, I have, I have confidence that that will come quickly, but just his adaptation to all those things that you can't replicate in a gym. Good.